Yeah. So I'll just ask a couple questions. Okay, go for it. All right. <laughs> um, so what are the major successes that you achieved today? Well, I think the, the most important thing is that this is the second annual summit, so it shows continuity, the commitment of the state to hold these annual summits to discuss any issues of concern. Uh, so that's one of the most important is that there will continue to be a mechanism for tribes and the state to get together at the highest levels to address issues of mutual concern. But I think there are a lot of other accomplishments that are important. Some of the issues with regard to economic development, permanent committee to, to uh, advise the state on tribal economic development needs, looking at tax incentives and issues of dual taxation I think is important. Uh, in terms of education I think it's really important that we're going to be taking a stronger look at issues like the multicultural and bilingual education Act, how that can fund native uh, language programs, and possibly even looking at what we can do with federal law so that more resources come to, to help with the, the teaching of native students. Um, I think with infrastructure, we continue to make tremendous progress, and so I'm really excited about several of the things we're doing. Well, it's certainly been a successful summit today in the last few days, all the planning that's gone into this, and your, your department, the uh, in, in, uh, Indian Affairs Department, has taken the spirit out of the lead in putting this together. Um, can you tell us uh, the core members of your staff? Oh, I, well, I have 14 staff members, but I think starting with our Deputy Secretary, Marvis Aragon, Jr., a tremendous help throughout this. Tammy Lambert served as our project um, project director for this uh, for the summit, which has, you know, taken four or five months to, to really sure. bring about. Um, every single staff member contributed. You know, Judy Sweena, who said, you know, was my executive assistant. You know, I, I'd have to name everyone. Lillian Brooks, our ASD. Jamie Mokino, who who's, uh, does our accounting and, and is serves kind of acting as our receptionist. All of our capital outlay staff, Lynette Cruz and Rebecca Martinez, um, you know, especially our policy staff, Francine Hatch, Christina Stick, uh, and now Lisa Marie Gomez, who's there, Ben Fletcher, who's our training and technical assistance coordinator. So hopefully I didn't leave anybody out, but every single person in the department contributed something. Absolutely. Um, and then I wanted some uh, parting thoughts on Governor Richardson. This is obviously, he's made some incredible, incredible strides on behalf of Indian country here in New Mexico uh, on his watch specifically. And, uh, and what do you see as being his strongest legacy regarding our native peoples here in New Mexico? Well, there are a lot of individual accomplishments, but I think the ones that last the longest is that now we really have seen a transformation of state government. I think at the beginning of his administration, you had a handful of agencies that really appreciated that they had to exercise a government-to-government -government relationship with tribes, that they had as part of their constituency native people on and off the reservation, and that that was a group of people that required specific attention. Now I can be confident in saying that all 33 cabinet agencies have that, that sense, have that perception. And as tribal leaders here today said, the State Tribal Collaboration Act provides that foundation so that we know that regardless of who gets elected into office this year, in four years, in 16 years, that that's going to continue. That's, I think, what is his, his strongest legacy and the thing that we should all celebrate. Got it.